Wikipedia. You know what it is, you've used it, but do you know how they got started? Well, it's kind of gross. Back in 1996, Wikipedia's eventual founders, Tim Shell, Michael Davis, and Jimmy Wales, oh, sorry, Jimbo, as he likes to go by online, together founded a website called Bombus.com. What did Bombus do, you might be wondering? Well, its founders didn't really know either. When the site first started, it was a directory of information about Chicago. Seeing as how, at that point, less than 1% of the world was using the internet, this idea didn't last long. So they transitioned into an online car finder with the slogan, remember, if you aren't having fun, it isn't Bombus. But that's not even the weirdest part about this site. There's an image that says this site is best viewed with VistaView 3D nav goggles. Sadly, they're not real. If we check out what car dealers Bombus has available to search through, there's three. One leads you to a page that just says cars, and the next two are just GIFs of toy cars. Yeah, a little weird. For those wondering what Bombus stands for, there's a fill in the blank what is Bombus game on the site, with options that, well, I wouldn't expect to see on a car sales site. Unfortunately, the game doesn't work anymore, so I guess we won't get the real answer. Fast forwarding to 1999, Bombus transitioned out of cars and instead decided to become an internet ring index. But what is an internet ring index? Think of Bombus as one big folder full of other folders. Let's say we open their television folder. It'll take us to a folder of television shows. If we click on a show's folder, it'll show us more folders of actors, actresses, and one for the show itself. So let's click on the friends folder that's inside the friends folder. In it is a list of pretty much the most popular friends fan sites. Think of this as like Google, but before Google. Now, if you thought the Bombus car finder was weird, this site is even weirder. Bombus now not only had one slogan, it had 270. Huh? The What is Bombus game was also still there, but I still can't get it to work. There were banners you could use to display your love of Bombus, and there was even a link called The True Depiction of Bombus. Bombus was founded by a pair of Siamese twins connected at the hair, but that's not it. If we click Truer Depiction of Bombus just below it, we get Bombus Condones Male Pattern Weirdness. This site is clearly incredibly dumb, but without it, we wouldn't have Wikipedia, but I'm still getting there. Bombus' saga isn't over yet, and it gets even weirder. Being just an internet ring index wasn't exactly working out for Bombus. Other similar but more popular sites like Yahoo already existed. Bombus was trying to get users so bad that they even made this dumb little gift that advertises a free Ferrari, which much like the rest of Bombus was just a joke, right? Well. No. <laughs> Jimbo actually decided to give away his 1981 Ferrari in an attempt to get more people to use Bombus. I couldn't find anything that says who won or if it was actually even given away, but it seems legit as far as I can tell. Now, this car giveaway wouldn't be what caused Bombus to catch on, but this picture does give us a bit of a hint. The advertising director for Bombus soon discovered that 99% of the searches on the website were for nude women. Instead of doing a Tumblr and going, oh, God, ban it. They embraced it. They pivoted to instead be more of a search engine just for guys. And soon after that came up with something called the Bombus Babe Report. I can't exactly talk about the stories that were reported on, but I think you can take a guess on what they were about. But Bombus didn't stop there. Bombus Premium was released soon after, where you could pay $5 and get access to photo albums of Bombus Babes without their bottoms. And tops, but it didn't fit the rhyme. The women, of course, all started the shoots wearing Bombus.com t-shirts. Bombus was doing pretty well for itself, and if you need proof, here's a photo of Jimbo steering a yacht with two Bombus babes at his side. So in 2000, with the profits Bombus made off ads and Bombus Premium, Jimbo decided that they should start another website. It would be a free online encyclopedia that anyone could access and copy from as they wished. It wasn't Wikipedia, it was Newpedia. And 
It sucked. <laughs> Unlike Wikipedia, Newpedia was very strict with who could write articles for it. They didn't want just anyone to be able to write content for the site. They wanted scholars and people with PhDs. In fact, writers even had to fax in copies of their degrees as proof. But even that wasn't enough. After an article was written, it would then go through a rigorous seven-step peer review process. Keep in mind, everyone writing articles was doing this all for free, but running the site and paying its editor-in-chief still cost money. After 18 months of work and $250,000 spent, they had a grand total of... 12 articles. Yeah, what they were doing was clearly not working. Maybe the writers were too busy browsing Bombus. Well, soon after, a Bombus employee had an idea. They heard of something called a wiki, a new form of website sort of like an encyclopedia. People could create a wiki about any topic they wanted. Anyone could then add and edit pages of the wiki, all from their web browser. Jimbo liked this idea, and a month later, they launched a wikified version of Newpedia called Wikipedia. Finally, I know. In the first month of its existence, it had 200 articles written by volunteers, and by the end of the year, it had grown to 18 thousand. Bombus kept Newpedia going in the background, but as Wikipedia continued to grow, they finally decided to abandon Newpedia in 2003. At the end, it had a grand total of 24 articles. Yeah, not great. At the same time, Wikipedia wasn't making any money. So Jimbo and Newpedia's former editor-in-chief decided to tell the community they were going to put ads on the site. This upset a large portion of its users and even caused Wikipedia a Spanish community to make their own separate wiki that actually did pretty well for a while. Jimbo figured without ads, he didn't really see a way the website was going to make a profit. So instead, he decided to turn Wikipedia into a non-profit website, which of course came with a number of tax and money related benefits. He founded the Wikimedia Foundation, transferred ownership of Wikipedia from Bombus to Wikimedia, and started asking users for donations. That's why to this this day, you still sometimes get a little message that asks you to donate to Wikipedia. And these donations make Wikipedia a ton of money. They have over a hundred million in leftover cash from these fundraisers, which sounds like a lot, and it is, but if Wikipedia stopped taking donations today, they'd run out of money in a year or two because their costs have gotten so high. But what about Bombus? Well, the website existed until 2010, but by the time Wikipedia was getting big, so were other search engines like Google. So by 2007, the site and company were both basically dead. But in 2005, they tried one last trick. They launched a website called The Babe Engine, which, well, what it does is in its name. You were able to search the internet for babes using every filter you could imagine. You could even search by color, not skin color, but colors like red and purple. Yeah, I don't really get it either. As you might have guessed, Google was just better. Although Bombus never had any sort of going out of business announcement, they've been considered inactive since 2007. But the one thing that will never die is, remember, if you aren't having fun, it isn't Bombus.